Hi there, my name's Andrew Brown. Welcome to the series Real-Time Music and Sound with Pure Data. In this episode, we're going to be talking about bit crushing. What bit crushing does is it changes the resolution of the audio on the fly. I'm going to show you a visualization of this. These three circles are rendered at different visual resolutions. You can see that the one on the left is um, a much lower resolution than the ones on the right. We're going to do a similar thing with audio and we'll see a similar uh, visual display in our oscilloscope. As we get a more grainy uh, resolution, a lower resolution, we'll introduce um, upper harmonics. So we'll get some sort of noise or brightness. You might even call it grittiness into the sound. A sort of basic mathematical process we're going to use to do this is rounding down or rounding up. So you can see here in this diagram that a value of a fractional value 4.8 or 5.4 will be rounded to 5. And this shift from a sort of very fine resolution like a point whatever resolution down to a whole number resolution is kind of the equivalent of taking these numbers and just dividing them and rounding them by by smaller and smaller values, or actually larger and larger values, so that we get um, fewer steps along the way. So let's have a look at how this is done. We'll start with an oscillator sound source um, at some frequency. And the trick for um, doing bit crushing is to divide the sound and round it. Um, so let's start by doing that. We're going to use an expression tilde object to apply some formula for this. It's a tilde object because we're getting an audio signal in. So surprisingly we're going to use the round object. We're going to round down the, visual, the um, audio signal that comes in, in this case $V1 is a variable which stands for the audio signal that's coming in the first inlet. Um, and we're going to divide that by some number and we're going to divide it by a number which can also vary um, that's going to come in the second inlet. So this is an expression object, it's applying the formula rounding. The $V1 will stand for the audio signal that comes in this first inlet and the divided by the dollar $f2, which is going to be a variable, a floating point, F stands for floating point variable, which comes in there. Um, and we can vary that floating point number there. So that's our division. Um, the division and rounding is the first step, but then that will create a very um, low uh, amplitude sound. Uh, and so we need um, in addition to rescale it back up again so that we get it back to its full volume and um, we can do that pretty straightforwardly with a amplitude object, a multiply object which will just simply increase the gain. Uh, how much do we increase the gain? Well interestingly we just use the same value uh, to increase it. So we've decreased it and then we, re then we increase it, so we divide it, and then we multiply it. But because the dividing is being rounded, we're going to uh, get our bit crushing effect. Okay, let's provide an output gain control independently. Give it a amount. Change that from 0 to 1 to keep it in our audio range. Connect that up. Then add the DAC to our audio output, the digital to analog converter in stereo. All right, we turn this up and here we go. We have our bit crushed oscillator and you can see it in the oscilloscope. As we decrease this value, we're dividing by finer and finer amounts in an effect we're making this um, a higher resolution. And as we increase that amount, we're lowering the resolution. 
as you can see there and you can probably hear it's a much harsher sound as we go all right so that's effectively a bit crushing um, process however this value is not very intuitive um, it doesn't really tell us what our bit depth is so we want to um, be able to specify um, this uh, sort of step size value um, based on the number of bits so another little bit of theory we this image here shows you um, a visual depiction of the number of uh, graduations that are possible from every bit depth with a one bit sound we only have values um, on and off zero and one represented here by black and white in a two bit sound we get uh, four different values possible represented here by four different grayscales in a four bit sound um, that will give us 16 steps and you can see 16 graduations of gray and so on um, we get a similar effect of course in audio so the number of bits um, determines in a sense the number of steps um, that are in the resolution so let's have a look and see how we can do that um, I'm going to use a slider to control the bit depth and I'm going to make that slider range from 1 bit up to 16 bits okay so here's our slider um, for our bit resolution if we put a number box after that um, we will see what's going on but there's going to be one problem which we'll need to solve you can see that the slider by default even though it's going as it says from 1 to 16 it's giving us all of the floating point values in between so we need to um, make sure that we round that down so we only get like 1 bit, 2 bit, 3 bit, 4 bit um, we can use this um, int object, an integer an integer is a whole number when we put a value in there even if it's a floating point value it will come out as being an integer value as we can see here now we get steps from 1 through to 16 okay so far so good make some space we now need to um, work out well this bit depth is going to give us what resolution um, and to do that we're going to use um, an expression box with a formula in it it's expression without the tilde because it's not audio this time we're going to use the power function because the bit depth uh, works to 2 to the power whatever the bit depth is so we say 2 to the power the bit depth is going to come in as a variable for us um, and in order to make this um, go down to um, a very basic square wave we're going to subtract one from that number so now this value um, if we put a number box here we'll see what that is as we increase we see we get an increasing resolution maybe if I put that and label these it might make it a bit easier to see what's going on if I label this one as well so with a bit depth of one we get a resolution in this case of one you'd normally expect it to be two but that's because we're minusing this one if we get um, a bit depth of four we expect that to be 16 but we're taking one off uh, in order to make the visual resolution work a bit better for us which will become clearer once we see what's going on okay there's one more step it's not quite getting down to these kinds of values you can see that the values we were using before were pretty much between 0 and 1 yet yeah, this resolution value is 15 that's clearly too high what we actually want to do is to get uh, the inverse of that we're going to use um, an expression box again and so we're going to take that input um, and we're going to get the inverse of it so 1 divided by that so we'll now see that we're starting to get a range of numbers in this box here uh, which are now as we would expect between 0 and 1 and they get finer and finer as our bit depth increases um, so we get a finer and finer resolution and we get a coarser 
resolution as we go down. So let's hear what that sounds like. We'll start with it quite high. So there's our sine wave. As we lower the bit depth, in these high numbers um, it's very difficult to hear any particular difference and it's almost impossible visually to see what's going on. But once we get down to below 8 bit, there's a little bit of noise in there as we get to 6 bit, there's a bit more noise. You can sort of hear it but you can't yet see it on the oscilloscope very clearly. 5, we can start to hear some pretty audible noise there. 4 bit and we can start to see on our oscilloscope that it's getting a little bit rough um, in its visual appearance. 3 bits, we can clearly hear that there's a lot of um, high frequency components being introduced there. We can see the components on the spectrum analyzer and visually we can clearly now see the stepping. Down to 2 bits, uh, it becomes much more obvious audibly and visually. Down to 1 bit and we've basically produced um, a square wave um, at 1 bit or pretty close to it. So this is the process of changing the bit depth of our sound um, and when it's in this range of you know between 8 and 4 bits then we actually introduce a little bit of noise. Um, it's even more audible um, in a more complex sound than it is in an oscillating sound, just a simple sine wave oscillator. So have a go at that and I will see you in the next video.